Let's talk about removing a node from a running Cassandra cluster. When would you ever need to do that? Well, there are cases. In those cases, you may want to reduce your capacity. Maybe you ramped up your capacity for some event, and now you need to bring it back down again. Perfectly legitimate, and that's actually a good use case for this. The more likely case is that you have a node that is just behaving poorly. It's been bad, it needs a timeout, get it out of the ring. And that is a situation where it's more of a corrective, where we need to get rid of it and bring back a new one. So decommission and reboot strap. That's a process you may need to do often with a running Cassandra cluster, depending on hardware failures, things like that. So how do we do this? So when you remove a node from a running cluster, what happens is the rest of the cluster needs to make up for that loss. That's a certain amount of capacity that you're losing. So in this case where we have a four node ring, we just lost one quarter of our capacity by decommissioning it. And when you do that, that data needs to stream back out to the other nodes. Those nodes need to have that information. So there's some operation that has to happen just in decommissioning, not just turn off the node and go away. When the node decommissions, it has to go through some activity. So they're very simple commands, and these are commands that if you type them for the wrong reason, you're gonna be sorry, but just know what they are. Node tool decommission. This sets up that activity where it actually starts streaming data away from the node, getting it ready to be removed. That data that's stored there needs to go out, consistency checked, and then it's ready to go offline. So when you use the node tool remove node command, very similar, but this is a command you run if the node that you want offline is already there. Let's say that you lost a node from a severe hardware failure, and you need to remove that node from the cluster topology information. So you go to another running node, run the remove node for the node that's gone, and it will use the replicas to redistribute the data. This is how you do it in an emergency situation. So the big difference here is decommission. I have the node I want to decommission online, and then the remove node is, I don't have the node anymore. It's offline, it's gone, don't ask, here's your data. So very similar, but very different in the problems that you're solving. Finally, <laughs> there's the worst command I've ever heard of, but it's true, node tool assassinate. So what that means is I have a node that just won't go away. This is like doing a kill dash nine on your cluster for that running node somewhere. So you want it gone, you want it out. You just don't want it in your cluster topology information anymore. Nothing you're doing like a remove node will get rid of it. Node tool assassinate just removes it from the system tables. It doesn't exist anymore. It's dead to the cluster. This is the last chance resort you have. Please use this sparingly. So decommissioning a node, let's walk through what that does. So decommissioning is you want to decrease the size of your cluster. Again, like you ramped up maybe, and now you want to bring it back down. So when you run decommission, that node data will get distributed pretty evenly amongst the other nodes because you're redistributing the token load across all the running nodes. So the token ranges are now increasing on every single node. After you run the decommission command, it goes through a series of actions, not just streaming data, but it also goes through the shutting down of the ports and actually shutting down that running node. So it goes through all the processes. That data is not deleted from the node, it's still sitting there, so if you need it for later, that's still there, but just know that it is going to shut it down completely and disappear from the cluster information. The command, pretty simple, node tool decommission. And there's some other commands if you have to run it from another node, but in this case, you probably should run it from the node you want to decommission. Remove node, again, a pretty bad situation, maybe something like hardware failure, it died, that's okay. You may need to do that, it happens. This is actually pretty prevalent in say, a cloud situation where maybe inadvertently you took out the node and you can't bring it back. If you kill a virtual machine or a instance in a cloud, you can't get that back, it's not coming back. So in that case, you're gonna have to do a remove node on one of the running nodes. And this is the next level of escalation of getting rid of a node. The command is pretty simple, and you can even ask for a status of how things are going. Back to assassinate. Again, last resort. Do not run this unless you absolutely have to. And it's there for a reason. Sometimes the state of the cluster gets a little wacky, and you need to use this command to remove it from all the system tables. But again, 
if you're using this, you really need to think twice before hitting that command because what you're doing is you're just forcing a node out of the cluster really hard. And it may not be the best situation if you do think you have a running node in there. It will cause some weird instability if that data really was supposed to be there. The command is pretty simple. You say node tool assassinate, put in the IP address of that node you want to get rid of, and it's gone. This has been a pretty good overview of how to remove nodes in all different situations, from good to bad. And if you have a situation where you need to remove a node, use one of these techniques.